The sea, once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonder forever. That's a quote from the legendary deep sea explorer Jacques Cousteau, and it's a quote that truly sums up man's obsession with the ocean's depths, an environment we still know so very little about. The past, present and future of ocean exploration kind of comes down to one thing. Human bodies have no business being underwater, but that hasn't stopped inventors and explorers from finding ways to conquer the ocean frontier. What we think of as modern ocean exploration began in 1942 when Jacques Cousteau, alongside engineer Emile Gagnin, invented a system that would supply divers with compressed air when they breathed underwater. They called it the aqualung, but it later became known as a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, or scuba for short. The invention was a giant leap forward for underwater explorers, especially when compared to older technologies. From the 1600s to the 1800s, diving equipment of various iterations were developed and tested. There were diving bells that provided divers with a limited supply of air underwater, bathyspheres, which were rudimentary submersibles, and primitive diving suits. However, none of these were really ideal for exploring, largely because they were incredibly dangerous. Many people died using all these devices. Scuba diving allowed explorers to go deeper than ever before, though deep is still a pretty relative term. Most scuba divers can reach depths of 130 feet, but when you consider the deepest part of the ocean is approximately 36,000 feet, scuba divers are really only skimming the surface. So what's holding divers back? The answer is pressure. For every 33 feet we descend underwater, the pressure exerted on our bodies increases by 14.5 pounds per square inch. At the very deepest part of the ocean, the pressure would be equivalent to one person bearing the weight of 50 jumbo jets. But that's not the only problem divers have to contend with. During deep ocean dives, inert gases like nitrogen dissolve in human tissue from the diver's air tank. As he or she ascends to the surface, this nitrogen is released from the tissues as bubbles, which can block blood flow around the body. This condition, known as decompression sickness, can be deadly. Divers can reduce these risks by not diving too deep, not ascending too quickly, and not spending too much time underwater. However, some divers have to spend a long time in the ocean, like those who fix deep sea equipment and aquanauts who collect scientific data in underwater laboratories. To reduce the risk of decompression sickness, their only option is to stay in an underwater hyperbaric chamber for a month so they can do back-to-back -back dives. This small vestibule can replicate air pressures at various depths, so users' bodies are primed for long dives. But there may be a way around that cumbersome process. Spurred by the greater desire for control and freedom underwater, a Canadian company invented this. It's an exosuit. It's essentially a one-man submarine with articulated joints for flexibility and thrusters to propel the diver through the water. Most importantly, the suit enables the wearer to maintain surface pressure for up to 1,000 feet. That means no hyperbaric chambers and no decompression sickness. Scientists are excited to use the exosuit to discover new marine species, uncover lost shipwrecks, and more broadly, to bring man one step closer to finally mastering the ocean frontier. The all-new Toyota RAV4 Hybrid lets your sense of wonder lead the way and drive your passions further. The new RAV4 Hybrid model is a compact SUV with up to 34 miles to the gallon in the city, as estimated by the EPA. The right choice for any adventure, Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. Even though we learn more about the ocean each day, there is still an awful lot we don't know. Click here to watch this episode of Test You Plus to find out exactly what we do and don't know about our world's oceans. There's up to a million species in the seas, we think. 25% to 80% of the species in the oceans still need to be described. We don't actually know a lot about them. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.